Hi, everybody. It's Diane Evans with stampinwithdiane.com. I'm an independent Canadian Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the interior of British Columbia. So if this is one of your first times joining me, welcome. Um, make sure that you do subscribe to my YouTube channel or there's a link to my Facebook group as, as well. And actually, it's that link to my Facebook group that is going to give you some of these PDFs that come out. So Welcome to How Did They Do That? It's Technique Tuesday. Um, and I am revisiting some very, very old um, techniques. And as we go, we will progress. But my my collection that I've, I've listed and started actually doing up all the PDFs for is well over 200. So we've got a long ways to go. All right. So let me just, I'm just going to jump right on down to my desk and I'll explain how some of this works. So, and I apologize, I am a little bit late. All right, so this technique is called, oops, I've got the wrong, I, I picked up the wrong one. It's called the smooshing technique. It was also called smashing technique. And honestly, if I did the smashing technique, it's a real mess and I would not be happy with what happened. So it's called the smooshing technique. Um, so this is a fun technique, but it also corresponds with Stampin' Up's watercolor month. Um, it has all to do with watercoloring and everything else. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this Fluid 100 paper. Good morning, Margaret. Good morning, tomorrow morning. <laughs> Um, anyways, um, it's a Fluid 100 paper. It's excellent watercolor paper. And the way that this, this technique is actually done, and I'm mad at myself for bringing down the wrong one. But basically, what you do, you are going to need, and oh my goodness, where are they? I think I left them. Let me just quickly run. all to the other end of the studio so you are definitely for this particular one you are going to need the fluid 100 watercolor paper you are also going to need some of these spritzers these spritzers are very reasonable they come in a pack of two i filled up one of them with water smooshing technique not smashing it's just one of those things that i the time really got away from me today it's I, I've been everywhere, it seems. Now, like I say, you can use the watercolor paper, but you can also use the shimmery white paper. I like the effect with the watercolor paper, but like I say, we don't know. It'll be just different sort of looks on what, what works. Now, take a photopolymer, hello. Take a photopolymer stamp set. In your photopolymer stamp set, you get this thicker, piece it's like a window sheet but then you get this thinner acetate piece and we can recycle this we can reuse this you could even use this part once you put it on there or you could even use wax paper i find acetate works the best for this so it's really important that you kind of use the right tools on it so like i say i really like to have the acetate so i've got some of that and I am, we are going to do some experimenting today. So this is a smooshing technique. Now, every Wednesday, it'll be at 9.05, I will post this PDF with the proper name on there. This will give you the instructions on how to do the PDF. Put a copy of your sample on there. I will have a picture of my sample and I'll also have the measurements and what stamp sets or what dies that I particularly use. So that's what you're going to get. That will be downloaded into my Facebook group under the file section. And you can just, um, or you could even do a, a search with the smooshing technique. All right, to protect my um, surface, who doesn't get these um, designer series paper things? So I'm just actually going to just put this down on here and you can't see that very well. But you know what? We'll see it in a bit. All right. So what I want to do is I thought I had more of this paper cut. And I, I know I did. But, oh, well, that's okay. We'll, we'll do it. Um, we'll cut it. 
Now, what I want to do is we can experiment with different colors um, with this um, thing. That's a very simple technique, but an old technique. So, and if you've got some color combinations that you want me to try, I am more than willing to try that while we're here. So I have some Highland Heather. So re-inkers are your best friend. And honestly, if you buy an ink pad, you should always buy a re-inker, especially with these new foam ones, because what happens is they, especially if you're using blending brushes or if you are using um, a lot of sponging, um, if you are um, doing lots of stamping, you can technically go through an awful lot of ink with these new stamp pads. Okay, so I now have Coastal Cabana. This is, these are pretty big drops. And then I thought, you know what? What probably color would go really good? Hello, Pam. What colors probably would go very good in Diana is Pacific Point. It's not one of those colors that I've used very often, but I'm just going to go ahead and use it. And then we're going to see how this all works. I actually should have some more of this watercolor paper cut so that you can see the different thought I had it. Anyways, we're going to come in with our spritzer and we're just going to spritz this up just like that. Lots of water on it. We don't need to, um, and this is basically all you're doing is just taking this and this is probably going to be a smaller one. So this will work out okay. And all you're going to do is take your watercolor paper and this is how simple it is. You watch the magic. This and smoosh. And if it comes out the side, it comes out the side. We're all good with that. <coughs> Whoa. Now, that happened to have some spots on it. Now, I'm not sure if I really like that, but I think this will work. Now, this it happens to be the shimmery white. So let's just smoosh that down, and you'll see that shimmery white works as well. And no two things are the same. Those are pretty colors together, right? So now, I'm just gonna come in with some paper towel and I'm just gonna wipe this off. And let's think of another color combination that would work really, really well. So note to self, I do not want those blotches like that. That could be okay. This would be kind of cute with a whale, it could look cute even with the hippopotamuses. All right, so now what I'm thinking, what would be really neat color would be this parakeet party. And maybe Bermuda Bay. Let's try the Coastal Cabana because I've got it out. And then, not happy with myself not having all of this stuff print cut out. Oh, here we go. I knew I had a bunch of it cut out. So, all right. So let's come in with our spritzer. Remember, it's just plain water. Have you been downloading these um, tutorials? I sure hope so. Oh, my goodness. Now. I do not want those to be circles, right? So I think the more water I put on there, ooh, this is gonna be a very pretty one. So I'm gonna come in with my watercolor paper and I am going to smoosh it. Smoosh, just like that. Hence comes the name, right? Ooh, that's very subtle. So maybe we need some more. Um, what other color would go? That almost looks like a yellow, doesn't it? So, remember, like I say, that it's watercolor. Um, do we want to go in? Let's go in with the, the um, shimmery white paper. That's going to have dots in it. I know it is. Oh, you have a binder for them. Oh, that's awesome. It just, when you go back to the things, now that is not going to show very well. 
I think I got too much water on this one. Let's see. Let's play with this a little bit. Whoops. And let's just, this one's going to go quite light and it's gone all a green. Huh. Well, we're going to do that because I think it'll be kind of neat to smoosh that up. Now, you can let this automatically dry or you can turn around and have your heat tool. So what other color combination do you think would be a good color combination? Um, let's see. Um, ooh, this is going to see the paper doesn't work as good as the watercolor paper. All right. So then we could turn around and we could use, let's see, let's use petal pink. Let's use some, you know, that's polished pink. Do we want to do some purple? Oh, you know what? Maybe this some um, orchid oasis might look good in there. And I don't know how this will look, but we'll we'll put it in there. It's it's just a color as fresh freesia. So like I say, we're just gonna go like this. Let's go ahead and put our orchid oasis. Okay, Rose, where you find the um, the techniques is you go to my Stamping with Diane Stamping Group. And you go under files, and that's where all the techniques are. This is some um, technique number nine, actually. Now, this is fresh freesia. freesia. I have no idea what this is going to look like. And let's see how that's going to work. We're going to come in with our spritzer. Black. Uh, you know, it would go muddy, I think. Um, you could. Whoops. Ooh, this one's going to be interesting. I may not like this one. I don't want those spots, so. Don't know how I'm going to think of this or what I'm going to think of this one. So let's go in just with our paper. Shimmery white paper. Let's squish it out. Ooh, that is kind of pretty though. Um, and then my thought process was I would like to do something that's hmm. um, let's see. So this, there's this. I'm not finding one that's working with me yet. So I'm gonna use Parakeet Party. I am going to use Evening Evergreen. And I'm going to try this. We'll see how this works. And then I'm going to go back to a pink and a yellow. I think. All right. So let's just do this. You say, I don't want those dots showing. Well, this one should be pretty. I'm going to come in with my, whoops, I'm getting it all over my other ones. This is a watercolor paper. Lay it down, smoosh it, it all comes out. And if you want to do it, oh my goodness, that one's pretty. Yes, I'm liking that one. Okay, now I want to do one more. And let's go ahead and I'm going to do, oh, that one's so pretty. I'm going to do it in a pink and a yellow I'm thinking or a pink and an orange or my goodness I'm going to get ink all over me so to come back in with more and then I can start showing you some cards that we can make with this that that the fact of getting a background is amazing and then you can start stamping now on my tutorial I do say that you can go ahead and stamp like I could go ahead and I could stamp an image and I'll show you a stamped image on this piece of paper. If you stamp an image on watercolor paper, you're going to definitely need your stamp apparatus in order to get it so that it's going to um, work for you. Um, because it's so it's a porous background that that's why it doesn't work very good. All right. So I said polished pink.
does kind of look like the Northern Lights, doesn't it? So we're gonna go polished pink. And I'm thinking what might look really nice with that one. I have all my stamps out here. Maybe so saffron. I'm wasting a lot of this, but you know what? You don't use that much of the reinkers for this. I always say, make sure you get your reinkers though, because it's so important that you have them, especially when your colors retire, right? Okay. Don't want those spots. So let's get those spots out. Oh, I'm almost up the water there. I know I've got my other one here. I just don't push it off to the side. Let me see. Let's pull another one out. I, I filled both of them, so. All right. So let's go. And just a bit more water. Like I say, I don't want those blotches. This one will be pretty. I'm going to come in, oh, I should have had watercolor paper. So I'm just actually going to come in with some watercolor paper. And I'll just quickly cut it, my trimmer. I at least remembered to bring my trimmer downstairs. So I'm just going to cut this piece in half. So like I say, this is called smooshing. It didn't cut all the way through. You know what? It'll be okay. I'm going to kind of tear it. And let's smoosh it. So if you wanted to, you could go back in. Is that not pretty? Eh? And just like so. Yeah, this one's very pretty. I like the, the green one as well, the um, parakeet party one. So we have all these. So let's just take this off. Talk about science experiments, right? So it's a matter of what colors do you like together. There's some beautiful colors. Like I say, this one would have been so pretty had it not had the spots on it. This one's pretty. This one, I am going to show you a, a card I have something in mind that will work with that one. So what we would do is we would just dry these off. Um, now, the other part is, is dry from the back side as well. That kind of stops the curling um, when you're um, drying your paper. If you use glue, I like the imperfections of this particular one. I but this is watercolor paper you can tell the watercolor paper this happens to be the shimmery white so it kind of sits on it where with the watercolor paper it soaks into the paper oh this one's pretty so we'll just do this one as well and turn it over so which one's your favorite? This one I thought was going to be prettier, but this one, yeah. Like I say, it's a background, so it's all dependent on how you want it to go in your particular. You could blow on it with a straw. That's actually a really good idea. Actually have straws down in my my um, studio unless I'm I'm doing certain things. But blowing with a straw is a very great idea. So we've got that. This one feels dry. This one is definitely wet. This happens to be the um, shimmery white, and it it just sort of sits on the paper. This is the watercolor paper. This is shimmery white too. This one got speckles from everything else. And when you do this, this technique, you never will get two cards the same. It just, it won't happen. 
So when I was doing this, I went, okay, what is one of the best ways to do something like this? So this, let's see, what would be a good color for that to be on? Would it be soft succulent or evening evergreen? Let's see. maybe the soft succulent we might get away with. So this could, hmm. probably better with evening evergreen. Like I said, I didn't know how these were gonna turn out. So you, you just don't know, and I think this one's too narrow. Yeah, it is. Um, you don't know how it's actually going to turn out. Now, the other thing is, when you're actually cutting, um, when, when you're scoring, the best thing how to score is make for two. So I'm actually, I'm scoring this at four and a quarter. Turn it around at five and a half and then that means I've got two cards just like that two for one and it just makes it so much easier for when you're thinking of in the, the future all right so let's see how that's gonna look whoa that this would be really nice with a certain one but yesterday I used perched in a tree so I thought to myself well, wouldn't that be kind of neat to do this? Now, when you're doing this watercoloring technique, sometimes one of the nicest things to do is to put black on it and check that card out. Does that not look nice? Then I thought to myself, could I do this and could I just do half of it on there? Which I could do that too. See how I could do that? I like this white down there. So all of my watercoloring or all of the smooch, smooshing technique, I am going and I am actually using um, dyes with it only just because I'm using actually the watercolor paper. So let's go ahead and put this on. This one happens to be, I think it's three inches by five inches. So it's that middle part there. And like I say, I like this imperfection. I, I, I really think that looks nice. Then, I'm just going to take these pieces out. Whoops. Not that it's really a... And I am going to put this just like that. Like I say, I could use the whole perched in a tree. See, added value for perched in a tree, right? So I'm just going to go, do I want to pop that up? No, I don't because I don't want this rough edge to, find, to see in there. But totally different than what I expected when I first came down here. So let's go ahead and put that right on there like that. Look at that. I want that piece out of there. Just like that. And then I have some pieces of black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a sentiment. Let's see. Um, I don't think I even had that perched in a tree really close by. But I'm going to use some white embossing powder on here and we are going to hmm words what kind of words would you like on here what what kind of hmm trying to think what would be good words thinking of you is good um Happy birthday is good. Let's see. You know what? I will take this person with in a tree. And let's go no matter this. No, 
I want something more. I'm going to do a thinking of you. So I'm going to come in and use my thinking of you. Very indecisive again today. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. And I am going to take... That's not going to fit on there. So... I have some pretty neat dies that I've actually cut out that you can that I could do with an awful lot of these um these um these sets because I wasn't like I say I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out with the colors so I kind of had to be all over the place with all these different colors here and and I love stamping on the fly Mo male happy birthday Oh, help me with a stamp set for happy birthday then. Oh, you know what? He's all that. He's all that. Does that have a happy birthday in it? No. I want a font that, well, those those crazy ones, the, the Charming Sentiments works well. Hmm. Trying to think of a happy birthday. Somebody suggest a happy birthday one. Um, I don't know. You want more of a bolder sort of tight print. So, um, So I can't think of something at this point. Hmm. Well, we're just, I'm going to just go thinking of you. There's nothing wrong with, like, this one might be one of those ones that you need, like a sympathy card, right? This isn't how I want that to go, though. Well, we'll have to do that on another card. So I'm just going to come in with my white embossing powder. Male, happy birthday. Yes, I know. I just don't know what sentiment to use. See these dies? Oh, my goodness. I was thinking they would look really nice. They're, they're called edge or trim die pretty amazing stuff and then I'm gonna, just gonna come in with my heat tool again I really like the the effect of this half um, thing from that um, perched in a tree so it just shows you that these dyes are really um, pretty effective I didn't think of the northern lights with this sort of thing but I kind of like how that's kind of turning out Let's just put that down all right so I'm going to see how this is going to work because this I kind of want to do something with this so I'm just fussy cutting this out, the thinking. This, you can get such a different look by doing this with your stamps. And of course they have that charm, those charming um, ones, dies that have all the die cuts that cut out with it. Um, but this I want a certain effect. So this is gonna be thinking. Artistically inked, yeah, that's just the plain one. Yeah, I could definitely do that. But I wanted, I want this to go like this. Of. You. There we go. You know, I have to say, I love doing these techniques. Um, it, it's funny because I, I have one person that says, so what are you doing today? And I said, I'm not sure what I'm doing today. 
And I may have a list of three or four that I'm thinking of doing today, but I don't. Then I switch my mind up at the end. And I was out most of the days, so I thought it should be a fairly simple one. I have one technique that I, I printed out right from the very, very beginning. And I can't wait to show you that technique. It was one of my favorites, but it has to be a certain type of a, a stamp to do it. So, okay, so I'm just going to come in here. And let's just take this off. So we're going to go thinking. Of... Now, I could have put it all down, but I think it looks better that way. And then I'm going to come in with my um, matte black dots. I think that'll kind of tie in the black. Now, I could have used Evening Evergreen here, but my whole thing that I want to do with these is I wanted to do black accents with it just to show you how striking it really is. So... And one more down here, just like that. Now, of course, I can finish off the inside of the card, but I want to show you another card. So I really, I, I like that one. That one's singing to me. I don't have the dimensionals off the back of these. There we go. All right. So then I ended up with this one that I thought, well, that'll be interesting. So check this out with now I should have a polished pink um well I can even put this onto black a black card base this is not the right size though or do I want to go yellow or pink so let me just grab So I thought that this would be kind of nice to have, let's see, we could put, or even yellow might be good. So we'll have to check that out. So let's see, we could do this. Ooh, that would be pretty. So I'm actually going to cut this down. So, like I say, did you know that it's watercolor month with Stampin' Up? And all that really means is three and a half. So, three and a half and four and a quarter would be four and three quarters. Um, it's watercolor month for Stampin' Up, which is weird because we really didn't really know too much about it. So, so we have, so we're going to go four and three quarters. We're going to hear my dog barking. And then this one piece is five. So we're going to go five and a quarter. See how that works. We can always change it up. So I'm going to come in. Let's put it onto a... Oh, that's not very good. Let's see how big is that? I figured that was too big. Funny how you can look at it and go, ooh, that doesn't look like four and a quarter. So I'm just going to cut this down to four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. Oops, four and a quarter. Hmm. That. I got to cut this down some more. By five and three and three quarters. See how that looks. Oops. Well, that's why it didn't cut. Okay. Watercolor paper when it's been wet is harder to cut. There we go. So let's go ahead and let's put this on here like this. I'm going to put this on here. 
And then what we're going to do now, I want to show you some of these other dies that I thought would work really, really well. This one is called, um, let's see. Um, this is something borders. And I thought that this was pretty nice. Check that out. But I think I'll save that for another day. And then that's another border one that I thought would be really nice. Now, what you could do is you could turn around and just do a straight thanks, which would be a very simple card. Or you could turn around and you could use some of these. And these are from the Quiet, quiet Meadows or Meadow Dies. So we could just put this across here. And, or we could even use the Splendid Stems which are these ones here, which would be pretty amazing in itself, right? But I'm going to put this one on because I haven't used it in a while. And I'm not going to decorate the inside. Oh, thank you. Yes, I know. The green one is, at this point, my favorite, that's for sure. It's, um, when you're stamping on the fly, you never know what's going to turn out. So... This is just going to go on here. Now, do I want some ribbon on there? It's not handy. I think we'll leave the ribbon for now. want to make sure that you got this good and down because it's a little you know because it's been wet now is that not pretty oh my goodness so I'm going to take this and I'm going to come in with my black dimensionals like I say this is so pretty too look at that I have an idea for this so we'll, we'll surprise you with that idea later on um, and then just put some dimensionals on here. Oops, I put it on the wrong side. It's right in the wrong side. I just need some smaller ones up here. So are you going to try this technique? Like I say, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. Might be a little messy. Um, Reinkers and that acetate from your um, your stamp cases is amazing. So I'm gonna take this off. Absolutely use ribbon. Well, we're gonna have to do a bow on top of it afterwards. I think I know who said that. All right, so let's go ahead and stick this up. I wish we had black ribbon still. Black and the polished pink would be really pretty together. There. All right, so we just want this to come across here. I'll have to grab that ribbon because it's right down here. Nothing's all in the right spot, right? So at this point, what I could do is I could have done that thanks, but I would have had to cut out um, I, my thought process when I did this was to actually have... Um, Yes, there's black twine. Yeah, there's black twine. It's the um, essentials twine. And I do happen that I just had some of that come in the other day. And it, um, yeah, and I won't find it in this mess. But 
that's okay. I am going to go. Let's I'll just tie a bow in here and we'll put it down here. But yes, there's black twine. Um I just ordered it in because I ran out of all of them. I thought maybe I might have had some black in the um, drawer there loose. All right, so we've got that. Now, what we want to do is we want to put a sentiment on there. So I love the sentiments on this Happiness Abounds. I think it's got some beautiful things on there. I'm going to do um, a happy birthday. There's a really nice congratulations on here as well. This happens to be one of my favorite sentiment stamps at this point. Um, it's really nice when you can get something and um, it, it um, has all those sentiments that you need. And I like the fact that it's a mixed font. All right, so let's move this stuff out of the way. And we're gonna use our embossing buddy again. So I'm gonna do this in white because I think it needs to be done in white. Use it with Versamark. Who likes embossing? I know I do. You know, black and the white gingham, that would work too. Hmm, that's a great idea. Let's check it out. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to put this in my white embossing cover. And I don't think I stamped that very well. So remember, if you like this, make sure that you give me the thumbs up. One of the best compliments that you can give me is to share my video. That did not work very good. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that again. Um, yeah, let's do this. I had a very interesting thing yesterday. I had somebody call me and I never answer my phone if I don't know who the person is. Um, that's why I always say to people, text me, um, if they've never phoned me on my cell phone, but I picked it up and you know how sometimes you know that you should be picking up a call. I did, and I had a very, very nice call from a lady that watched a YouTube of mine, which blew me away, actually, but very nice. Okay. It's very messy. going to come in here. We're just going to take a bit of this off the brush. A little bit here. There we go. And now I can heat set back. Thank you. Yeah, that's it's um if you're on my page, you can definitely share if you're on YouTube, you can share as well. Very nice. Thank you. All right, so let's put this on. And somebody suggested black and white gingham ribbon. I do have that. That'll be interesting. I don't know how this will look with this. You love um, the emboss. One thing with embossing, it's one of those things that it is, it's um, kind of a um, something you have to practice at, but it really is an amazing um, technique. It, it really does do an awful lot to it. I don't know how this is going to look, but we'll, we'll give it a try. I don't know why I'm doing it together. What do you think? Do we want gingham on there or do we want the polished pink? There's our gingham. And 
and we'll cut that. Oh, these are not my ribbon scissors. Right. Pink. Okay, we got pink. Two together. So again, I'm going with this, this look of um, cut. You know what? I don't like that. I'm happy like that. I'm going to have to cut that down. Should have done that a little bit thinner. And we'll just cut that. So we'll do happy birthday. So there's the black. I'm alone and I'll do the pink. I'll show you what the pink looks like as well. Okay. The game's kind of pretty. And of course, we would decorate the inside of the card. That gingham is kind of nice. So let's just quickly do this. There we go. I love tying bows. All right. So we've got a lot of that. I got lots of scraps to play with. So gingham or pink? I'm tending towards the gingham. I think the gingham was a great idea. Um, that's just my thought. So. Hmm. So we'll see what happens. Yes, it is a better contrast. Um, like I say, with the smooching, smooching technique, um, I will be downloading it. It'll be downloaded tomorrow on my Facebook group. There is a link down below. Um, if you're not a member of that group, just make sure that you are um, just asked to join. Um, and I will approve you. And then um, at 9, 9.05 tomorrow, I'll be in the morning, Pacific time. I will put the PDF up. It'll have the, the picture of these two cards. And we're going to use some glue dots there. And you can download it and put it into a three ring binder. Um, like I say, these were ones that I had um, in my book from 2000, wow, almost 20 years ago when Stampin' Up! came to Canada. So, there we go. Yeah, just trim that one off. And I'm going to use those matte black dots just because I think they're stunning on this pink. Let's see. You know what? I'm I'm going heavy on the right side. So we would decorate the inside too, but because we've been on here for so long, I don't want to take up your time. So there is card number two done with the pink and the so saffron. Now, where did my green card go to? My goodness. This is not smashing, but smooshing. I brought down the wrong one. Oh my goodness, I can't even find the card. I really liked that card. Hmm. That's silly. Very silly. Nuts. Ladies, where did I put my card? Oh, here it is. All right. So these are all the different ones, our science experiments. Um, the one I really thought I was going to like was the, the um, Highland Heather, the Pacific Point, and the Coastal Cabana, but it didn't work too well. And there's my other card. 
So smooshing, smooshing technique. So I hope you like that. Oh, thank you. You know, like Diana, it's so nice to be able to use your stuff and, and find different ways of using your stuff. Re-inkers, there's, there's so many different techniques with re-inkers. Trust me, like you could go on forever and ever and ever. All right, again, like I say, give me the thumbs up. Make sure um, that you share um, my video and um, invite people to the group. Um, I, I am more than happy to share the different techniques with everybody just to make sure that everyone continues to stamp. So have a great day. We will see you tomorrow at three o'clock Pacific time. And it's a mystery challenge. And this is kind of a, it's a cute mystery challenge. I think it's going to be fun um, with um, my clues that I, I figured out today. Tomorrow might change. Anyways, you guys have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.